Assalamualaikum. Hi guys. Let's start with the new chapter for the new semester SK025 where we are going to learn about reaction kinetics. In this first chapter, we have three subtopics that we need to cover. Let's go with the first subtopic, reaction rate, where you are going to learn in this video about how to define the reaction rate write the differential rate equation and how to determine the reaction rate based on differential equation of a reaction. So first thing first, we are going to learn what is reaction rate. So definition for the reaction rate is the change in the concentration of a reactant or a product over time. For example, you have reactant A produce product B. So what you have to take note, you need to know how to write the expression for rate based on reactant A and product B. As we know that reactance decreases over the time, so that's why when we want to write the rate expression, rate equals to negative D concentration A over DT. And then DA is the change in concentration for reactant A and dt is the period of time. Next, for product, you have to write based on product, by the end of the reaction, it will increase. So the sign will be positive. So positive d concentration b over dt. So db is change in concentration of b. So as I mentioned before, negative sign because concentration of a decreases with time. So the sign will be negative. And then for the positive sign, because concentration B increases with time. And the unit for rate is mole per liter per second or molar per second because at the top is the concentration and at the bottom is the time. And usually time can be in second or any suitable units. So as we know, reaction rate is inversely proportional to the time. So this is how we write the relationship between rate and time. And time can be in seconds, minutes, hours or years. The shorter time taken for the reaction to progress means that your rate of reaction is higher. Let's talk about how to determine the reaction rate based on two cases. The first one is experimental data you have here. You need to determine the reaction rate for this reaction. So we know that the rate is concentration final minus concentration initial over period of time. So you have to calculate based on each data that you have. So you got three different data. So I'm going to calculate for rate one and then rate 2 and then the rate 3 so you can see that the rate is constant based on the value 5.0 molar per second when you give the reaction at different time let's continue with the second case how you want to determine the reaction rate based on graph of concentration versus time so first thing first there are several different types of rates that you have to know the first one is average rate this is the reaction rate over a period of time. So how you want to determine for this one? Graphically, you can determine by calculating the line of the gradient. And usually, kita akan draw tangent line. Next one, instantaneous rate. This is the rate reaction at specific time. So please take a look here. This word is very important. So the same case, you want to calculate instantaneous rate, you mesti lukis tangent line. Tapi, tangent line yang you nak lukis tu mesti at the point that corresponds to the particular time yang you nak. So for example, you want t equals to 300 seconds, so you have to draw your tangent line at t equals to 300 seconds. That's for example. And the last one, initial rate. So, ini adalah instantaneous rate at the beginning of the reaction. So, dia macam related lah dengan this one. Tapi, dia mesti at the beginning of the reaction. Dan same case, masih draw the tangent line. Tapi, time must be equals to zero. Barulah you calculate its gradient. So, how you want to understand more? Let's say we have this example. This graph is for the reaction H2O2 aqueous produce. H2O liquid plus 
half oxygen gas. What you want to know here, how you want to obtain the ratio rate. So ratio rate can be obtained by drawing, by calculating the gradient of the straight line. So kita draw straight line here from here until here. So this one, we call it as average rate. Okay, yang warna purple ni. And then, kalau saya nak tahu instantaneous rate, let's say, saya nak instantaneous rate at t equals to 300 second. So, time is at the x-axis. So, maknanya awak akan draw tangent line yang warna merah ni. So, inilah tangent line untuk instantaneous rate. And then, the last one, kalau saya nak initial rate, kita akan lihat daripada blue line. Sebab apa? Sebab initial rate berlaku pada t equals to 0. So, this is t equals to 0. So, dia akan bermula daripada sini. So, saya akan draw tangent line warna biru. So, calculate lah dia punya gradient. So, I hope you know how to calculate the gradient because it is very important in this chapter. So, next one, kita try example 1. Saya minta awak calculate reaction rate at t equals to 300 second. So, kita ada banyak information kat sini. But, what I want is the instantaneous rate at t equals to 300 second. So, the gradient that I'm going to draw is the tangent line between A2 dan A3. So, maknanya antara here to here, kita ada time equals to 300 second here. So, this is t equals to 300 second. So, I want to calculate based on line yang warna merah ni, tangent line ni, kita calculate dia punya gradient. So, I'm going to put all those values. So, I akan dapat negative 1.11 exponent negative 3 molar per second. Tapi, you have to understand that this negative sign is referring to the negative slope. Sebab, kita dapat ratio rate ini dalam bentuk negative slope like this one. Okay? So, that's why saya akan buat final conclusion rate equals to 1.11 exponent negative 3 molar per second without negative sign. So, settle untuk reaction rate. Now, let's continue with the differential rate equation. So, what is this? Differential rate equation is the relationship between rate of disappearance of reactant dan juga rate of appearance atau performation of product in a chemical equation. Let's consider this reaction. So, kita ada a few unknowns here and coming together with the several coefficients. So, macam mana saya nak write the differential rate equation? Case yang sama, saya akan mulakan subjek saya sebagai rate. So, perkataan ini sangat important. And then, awak akan tulis dalam bentuk negatif untuk reactant. Kita ada A dan B, capital letter. Perlu dalam bentuk rate yang kita sudah belajar. Cuma, dekat depan, saya mesti tulis 1 over small letter A. So, small letter A ni, same goes for here, here and here adalah dia kita panggil sebagai stoichiometric coefficient. So, ini cara kita write the differential rate equation. Mesti tulis dalam bentuk macam ni. So, as general, kita perlu faham juga awak kena tahu negative sign dan juga positive sign perlu letak dalam differential rate equation awak. Contoh, negative untuk reactant dan positif untuk produk. So, let's go for the first example. Saya ada formation of ammonia. This is the equation. So, cara yang pertama, kita kena check dulu equation tu dah balance ke belum. As I see here, we got already the balance equation. And then, saya minta awak untuk write the differential rate equation. So, macam mana kita nak tulis? Kita tahu negative sign untuk nitrogen dan hydrogen. Dan positive sign untuk NH3. Dan setiap koefisien dia mesti ada 1 over some nilai dia. So, apa yang saya akan tulis? This is how is it. Dan this equation means that rate of disappearance for nitrogen adalah one third of rate of disappearance of hydrogen dan juga half of the rate of formation for ammonia. So, kita boleh lihat kat sini lah. Coefficient ni memainkan peranan yang sangat penting. 
Okay, kat sini dia one over one lah tapi kita tak perlu tulis. So, apa maksud rate of disappearance tu? Rate of disappearance bermaksud this whole expression adalah bermaksud rate of disappearance. And then, kalau saya minta awak untuk tentukan rate of formation for NH3, kita akan tulis sebagai positif D concentration NH3 over DT. So, ini adalah rate of formation for NH3. Tapi sebab dia ada half kat depan, ini adalah menuju ke, merujuk kepada ratio ataupun stoichiometric coefficient dia. So, let's try this question. Example 3, where we have one equation. You have to write the differential rate equation for this equation. So, as you remember, for the reactant, it will be rate of disappearance. So, maknanya kita akan pakai negative sign dekat depan. And we have to take a look at the coefficient at the front. And we need to put it as 1 over the value of coefficient. And same goes for the product. Cuma beza dia for the product adalah rate of formation. So, the sign will be positive. So, we are going to start the differential rate equation by writing perkataan rate dahulu. Okay, ini benda pertama. And then, continuing with all phases. Ingat, solid phase is included in the differential rate equation, including all other phases. Contoh kalau ada liquid pun, liquid akan termasuk dalam differential rate equation juga. So, kita go with the first two, iaitu kita punya reactants. Dia akan jadi negative sign. Kalau ada coefficient, kita akan letak coefficient. And then, ini adalah change of concentration for zinc, negative. Sebenarnya, dia ada 1 over 1. Sebab 1 here for the coefficient. Cuma saya tak tulis lah. Equals to negative 1 over 2. 2 is coming from the coefficient in front of Ag and O3. And then, D over DT, concentration of Ag and O3. The square bracket is referring to the concentration. Equals to, kita ada two more species here for the product. So, the product will be a rate of formation, the positive sign. And don't forget, if we have the coefficient, you have to put it 1 over. Jangan lupa letak positive sign. Sebab positive sign must be shown in your expression. Next, continue with the second question. Apabila zinc 2 plus increasing at 0.25 molar per second, what is the rate of decrease for Ag plus? So, kalau lihat kat sini, Ag, concentration Ag plus adalah sama dengan concentration Ag NO3 sebab this ion is coming from this compound. So, same goes for zinc 2 plus. Dia datang daripada zinc NO3 2. So, bila saya nak calculate, saya nak calculate rate of decrease untuk Ag+. Kita tahu Ag+, berada di bahagian reactant. So, maknanya saya tahu this is my differential rate equation yang saya dapat daripada soalan A. Dan saya perlu calculate rate of decrease for Ag+. Saya hanya mahu this expression sahaja. Okay, saya tak nak nombor 2 dekat depan ni. Sebab nombor dua ni hanya ratio. Apa yang saya nak adalah rate of decrease. So, ini yang bermaksud rate of decrease. So, in order for me to do that, I'm going to rearrange the equation. So, bila saya rearrange, saya akan samakan dia dengan zinc NO3 2. Dua dekat sini akan darab dengan bahagian zinc NO3 2. So, nilai untuk... Zinc 2 plus, concentration dia increasing at 0.25 molar per second. Saya boleh masukkan dalam expression untuk dapatkan rate of decrease for Ag plus. So, the value will be 0.50 molar per second. Now, let's continue with the next example. Which, this reaction, we have 2HI gas produce H2 gas plus I2 gas. Dan dia minta awak determine the rate of disappearance for HI. So, ini yang kita nak. Apabila rate of formation I2, nilainya 1.8 exponent negative 6 molar per second. So, in order for me to do this, the first thing first, I have to write the differential rate equation. So, kita ada 
this one as expression for differential rate equation. Jangan lupa letak negative sign for the reactant dan positive sign for the product. And then all of this expression must equals to one another. So equal sign ni wajib ada dan perkataan dekat depan adalah rate. So now I'm going to consider apa yang terlibat sahaja. So yang terlibat adalah I2 dan juga HI. So expression I2 dan juga HI yang terlibat. Sebab tu saya keluarkan ataupun saya simplify dia lebih kecil. And then apa yang saya ada adalah rate of formation for I2. This is it. The value is 1.8 exponent negative 6. So ini expression ini bermaksud rate of formation. Okay, so ini adalah rate of formation. So dia minta saya calculate the rate of disappearance for HI. So I'm going to rearrange to here bawa ke sana. Dan yang tinggal adalah negative D concentration HI over DT. So inilah yang kita panggil sebagai rate of disappearance of HI. So bila saya dah ada nilai yang saya perlu letak dalam equation, so saya masukkan sahaja value tersebut, press my calculator, I will have the value for the rate of disappearance for HI is 3.6 exponent negative 6 molar per second. So very easy. So I leave it to you, try this one, try this two, and try this three for your exercise. Try to complete this before our tutorial session. Jawapan final sudah ada. Just show the working calculation. So the summary for this video, what you should know, you should know how to define the reaction rate. And there are several types of rates that we've learned so far. Ada tiga dan macam mana nak tentukan daripada graph, awak kena lukis tangent line mengikut rate yang ditanya. And then seterusnya awak belajar second part of the video, you learn how to write the differential rate equation. Syarat yang paling penting, equation mesti balance and the reactant will decrease over the time. So negative sign, product will increase over the time then it will be positive sign. So that's it for this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye!